Thank you all for joining. So I'm excited today to tell you about how the field of tuberculosis can benefit from sequencing-based diagnostics and how we're planning to use nanopore sequencing to help meet those needs in New York State. Worldwide, mycobacterium tuberculosis is a leading cause of infectious disease deaths, and last year was second only to COVID-19. When I moved to the public health sector, I was surprised to learn how prevalent TB still is in the United States. Last year, the US reported 7,800 cases, and a large portion of those are here in New York. When a patient is diagnosed with tuberculosis, they're placed on a multi-drug regimen, and they can be on this treatment for months and sometimes beyond a year. But even with that intense of an antibiotic therapy, treatment can sometimes fail. And that's because not all tuberculosis infections are the same. TB can be classified by how difficult it is to treat. And so these categories are pan-susceptible, meaning that all of the treatment options are still on the table, or they can fall into more concerning categories, like drug-resistant, multi-drug-resistant, or extensively drug-resistant. And it's important to note that each of these resistance profiles are not static. They all have the capability to mutate into something more serious. And as we move down the spectrum of drug resistance, these infections necessitate more intense treatments. And that could mean harsher drugs for longer periods of time. But it's critical to get patients on the right therapy as soon as possible. Because on the, oh, excuse me. Um, but when they're first diagnosed uh, with tuberculosis, healthcare providers have limited information about what type of TB that they're trying to treat. And the reason it's important to get them on the right therapy is because on the wrong one, a patient's TB is going to progress, their treatment may fail, and it can promote the development of further resistance. To determine antimicrobial susceptibilities uh, in, a, in a laboratory setting, the traditional way of doing this is to isolate the bacterium and to set its response to antibiotics. We can do this by isolating the bacterium from a respiratory sample and plating it on a growth medium that contains the antibiotic. Following incubation, if the bacteria shows no growth, then it's considered susceptible to the drug. And if we observe growth, then it's considered resistant, and this isn't a good option for therapy. If you do this for a whole panel of drugs, we can build what we call that susceptibility profile. And the one that I'm showing here is what it looks like for a multi-drug resistant TB strain. Now, for most bacteria, this type of phenotypic testing can be done in a couple of days. But M. tuberculosis is not like most bacteria. It has an extremely glo slow growth rate. And so this type of testing can take weeks and sometimes even months, um, depending on the setup of our testing algorithm. And it seems like our clicker has stopped working, and I'm unable to advance to the next slide. Um, so if I could get some assistance. There we go. So now I want to talk about how um, sequencing is changing the way we do TB susceptibility testing. In short, sequencing can buy us valuable time. So because the secret to TB's drug resistance lies in its genetic code, we can instead identify those resistance mutations rather than waiting for the bacterium to grow in the laboratory. This is the type of work that we're already doing at the New York State Department of Health. So we start with a, a respiratory sample, and we spend a few weeks culturing that tuberculosis isolate out. From there, we can use that sample to perform either phenotypic testing or whole genome sequencing. So this whole genome sequencing workflow is something that New York State uh, was approved and implemented for clinical use in 2016. That means that we can report these re results back to providers and use that to guide treatment. Now, this whole genome sequence assay has been a real workforce, workhorse for us, and it's able, enabled us to reduce a lot of our phenotypic susceptibility testing. We now only perform that work in select cases. One instance is when we have encounter a novel or unknown mutation, and we use that phenotypic information to then feed back into our pipeline so that we can improve our detection. But one of the, the challenges of whole genome sequencing is that we have to have that isolate in order to get good data out. So we wanted to develop an assay where we could go direct from a patient sample. This is considered a targeted assay. But because we only have a small amount of TB DNA floating around in each of these samples, we use PCR in order to amplify the regions that we're most interested in. And I next want to walk you through what this targeted sequencing assay looks like. So we start out um, after we've processed and extracted DNA from our sample. Um, we have a multiplex PCR. 
This includes 13 primer targets, um, and these correspond to resistance to nine antimicrobials. And those represent both the first and second line treatments for tuberculosis. These primer pools were extensively optimized. And then we move on to library preparation, and then ultimately nanopore sequencing. We analyze that data with an in-house developed pipeline, which is similar to what we use for our clinical whole genome analysis. Now, the reason that we chose nanopore sequencing for this application was first the ability to have long reads. This enables us to design fewer primer pairs, and we can sequence our entire amplicon in one go and get consistent coverage. But one of the most important reasons is the ability to have real-time monitoring and analysis of our data. This enables us to stop the run as soon as we have sufficient data um, to report on, and we can ultimately get those results quicker. Now, it's important to note that nanopore technologies are not approved for clinical use. Um, but in New York State, we have a clinical laboratory evaluation program that reviews new laboratory developed tests. These include the, um, assays that have reagents that are intended for investig investigational or reagent use only. And as part of those evaluations, we perform testing that looks at sensitivity, specificity, reproducibility, and accuracy of those proposed tests before they are implemented in the laboratory. As part of that study for our targeted nanopore sequencing assay, we looked at an accuracy panel of 35 blinded respiratory samples. We performed targeted nanopore sequencing on each of these, and we compared the results from those that were obtained from our whole genome sequencing assay performed on an isolate. Now, getting good quality sequence data from a respiratory sample can be challenging. So I first want to show you that we can indeed get the data out that we need. So here I'm showing a chart that has all of our samples divided up by how much TB was in that initial sample. Uh, and this is based on how many TB-like cells were seen during microscopy. So I have the highest TB loads on the left and the lowest TB loads on the right. And these are color-coded based on how complete the data sets were. So in dark purple, these were complete profiles where we could determine resist, uh, susceptibilities to all nine antimicrobials. And for our highest TB loads, we're definitely accomplishing that. As we move farther down the spectrum, you can see that there's some light purple sections. And those represent partial profiles where we're able to make determinations for seven or more drugs. And those that are shown in gray were our very low load samples um, where we did not get sufficient amplification out for sequencing. But what I want you to take away from this graph is that our data quality does correlate with the type of sample we receive, and that we do get sufficient information out of the majority of samples that we process. Finally, I want to show you that this data is accurate. So here I have a comparison of the profiles identified by both targeted sequencing uh, down the side and a whole genome sequencing across the top. And if these results agree, we should see that all of the samples will fall into that shaded diagonal. With this method, we were able to successfully identify 21 susceptible strains, four drug resistant, and four multi-drug resistant. And this was a 100% concordance between the two assays. Since then, we have sampled many more, both primary samples, isolates, and things that are actively coming into our lab as we gear up for implementation. Um, because this is a, proves to be a much earlier detection method. Um, what we've seen so far in our studies is that we can get this targeted nanobore sequencing result two weeks before we have whole genome sequencing results available. And that's a big jump in our ability to early detect these drug-resistant strains. So our next step is to submit this to New York State's Clinical Laboratory Evaluation Program, and we're looking to implement it in this next coming year. But there are a few changes that I'd like to make down the road. One of those is we'd like to add additional targets so that we can profile extensively drug-resistant TB. This is sort of a, pun intended, a moving target because we don't yet know all of the mutations that confer resistance, and it's still very much an emerging field. But we are also looking to make some changes to the technology that we're using. We just received a grid ion instrument in our laboratory last week, and we are looking to switch over to using the updated chemistries and flow cells. Uh, another thing that we would like to accomplish is to be able to identify heteroresistance within our primary samples. So we're looking to tell if we can effectively uh, determine if there's more than one TB population present. I would like to end by emphasizing that this project is very much a team effort. Moving anything from a research into a public health or clinical space is a heavy lift, and there are a lot of players involved. Um, three of those are here today. Um, Carol Smith, who was involved in multiplexing the PCR reactions. 
Pascal Lapierre, who is a bioinformatician who developed both the whole genome and the targeted sequencing pipelines, and Kimberly Musser, who has given oversight to all of our TB sequencing activities at the Wadsworth Center. Um, I'd like to thank others that are located in these groups, as well as acknowledge that this project was funded through, by a grant through the NIH, um, and I am a fellow that is funded through the Association of Public Health Laboratories. And lastly, say thank you to Nanopore for giving me this opportunity to share the work that we are doing. Thank you.